Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Walmart employees are speaking up about the inaccuracy of their anti-theft AI. Sony has delayed hosting a showcase event for its next games console. A brand new release from Raspberry Pi now has 8 gigabytes of RAM on a Pi 4. Microsoft themselves are warning users to think twice before installing the Windows 10 2004 update. And researchers in Australia claim they have recorded the fastest ever internet data speed. Stick around, the full details in this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Walmart users uses AI technology to detect shoplifters at self-checkout, and a group of store associates are concerned that it's putting their health at risk. A group of Walmart employees say they were past their breaking point with Everseen, a small artificial intelligence firm based in Ireland whose technology Walmart began using in 2017. Walmart uses Everseen in thousands of stores to prevent shoplifting at registers and self-checkout kiosks. But the workers claimed it misidentified innocuous behavior as theft and often failed to stop actual instances of stealing. The group of employees has chosen to stay anonymous since they are not authorized to speak to the press. They told the press that they are dismayed that their employer, one of the largest retailers in the world, is relying on AI they believe to be flawed. One worker said that the technology was sometimes even referred to internally as never seen because of its frequent mistakes. The worker said they had been upset about Walmart's use of Everseen for years and claimed colleagues had raised concerns about the technology to managers but were rebuked. They decided to speak to the press, they said, after a June 2019 Business Insider article reported Walmart's partnership with Everseen publicly for the first time. The story described how Everseen uses AI to analyze footage from surveillance cameras installed in the ceiling and can detect issues in real time, such as when a customer places an item in their bag without scanning it. When the system spots something, it automatically alerts store associates. The concerned associates produced a video to prove their concerns were valid. It begins with a person using self-checkout to buy two jumbo packages, uh, packages of Reese's White Peanut Butter Cups. Because the packages are stacked on top of each other, only one is scanned, but both are successfully placed in the bagging area without issue. The same person then grabs two gallons of milk by their handles and moves them across the scanner with one hand. Only one is rung up, but both are put in the bagging area. They then put their own cell phone on top of the machine and an alert pops up saying they need to wait for assistance, a false positive. The filmmaker repeats the same process at two more stores where they fail to scan a heart-shaped Valentine's Day chocolate box with a puppy on the front and a Philips Sony Care electric toothbrush. The video concludes that Everseen failed to stop more than $100 of would-be theft. The employees believe that the tech frequently misinterprets innocent behavior as potential shoplifting, which frustrates customers and store associates and leads to longer lines. One worker described it as a noisy tech, a fake AI that just pretends to safeguard. The coronavirus pandemic has given their concerns more urgency. One associate said they worry false positives could be causing Walmart workers to break social distancing guidelines unnecessarily. Whenever seen uh, flags an issue, a store associate see, uh, needs to intervene and determine whether shoplifting or another problem is taking place. A corporate Walmart manager even expressed strong concern that workers were being put at risk by additional contact necessitated by false positives and asked whether the Everseen system should be turned off to protect customers and workers. This, of course, comes at a time when self-checkout may become even more important for stores as customers look for low-risk ways to shop. Sony has delayed hosting a showcase event for its next games console. Sony did not directly mention the civil unrest in the U.S., but alluded to it, saying we do not feel that right now is a time for celebration, adding it wanted more important voices to be heard. The firm had been set to unveil some of the games in development for its forthcoming PlayStation 5 on Thursday. Hours later, Activision delayed the release of new Call of Duty content. The firm said now is not the time to launch new seasons for Modern Warfare, Warzone, or Call of Duty Mobile. 
It had been expected that both free-to-play products would launch this week, presenting the firm a fresh opportunity to sell character outfits and other in-game items. Other technology firms have also cancelled planned launch events. Games publisher Electronic Arts postponed its reveal event for its latest sports title, Madden NFL 21. And Google had earlier delayed an online event for the next version of Android. Sony's move avoids the risks inherent in trying to promote games likely to involve violent combat at a time when standoffs and clashes are occurring across the U.S. Other game companies that are planning launches over the coming days may now come under pressure to reconsider their plans as well. Single board computer fans, especially those who love the Raspberry Pi, are ecstatic at the surprise release of the new Raspberry Pi 4 with a whopping 8 gigabytes RAM. Yes, 8 gigabytes. That's double the max memory they had until now been available. The Raspberry Pi 4 launched just under a year ago and is a very powerful little SPC, but two things about it were really lacking. No eMMC uh, storage capabilities and a maximum of 4 gigabytes RAM, though 4 gigabytes is still quite impressive for a little SPC. While eMMC is still not available on the Raspberry Pi, it boasts double the previous maximum amount of memory. That said, gone are the days of the Raspberry Pi being the $25 SBC. The price is now $75 US and up here in Canada it cost us $110 to order one plus shipping. This makes it the most expensive Raspberry Pi ever released. So why the surprise? When the Raspberry Pi 4 was released, an 8GB DDR4 package wasn't available, but Micron stepped things up earlier this year providing the necessary component for the upgrade. Unlike its predecessors, whose SoC can support no more than 4 gigabytes RAM, the processor used in the Raspberry Pi 4 can technically support up to 16 gigabytes of memory in total, so while 8 gigabytes is incredible in this space, it's not the absolute max. We've got to take a quick break. The Crypto Corner and more of this week's top tech stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Crypto Corner. It's been an exciting week. The market cap is around 270 billion US dollars, but there have been some interesting developments when we're looking at the price. In total, 10 coins went up in this last week by over 25%. The leader being Cardano, that went up almost 50% in the last seven days. The reason is that they announced now that they're getting serious with the upgrade. And so it looks like we're going to have Shelby soon on the live network. But others like Celsius, Vestchain, Zilliqa, uh, Maker, um, they all went up uh, over 25%. And only one coin went down by only 15%. So overall, it has been a very good uh, uh, week from the investment point of view. But also, if we look into what happened in regards to uh, the currencies, Let's take a look at Bitcoin. The last three weeks um, after the halving, the mempool is almost empty again. Um, the transactions are confirming in a very fast way. There has been no death spiral for the miners, uh, even though we lost nearly 50% of the hash rate, and but that all bounced back um, uh, nicely and the next difficulty adjustment will be just 10% uh, down. So Bitcoin really works like a clockwork at the moment. Ethereum 2.0 is the next subject. Has been a delay, of course. <laughs> We're accustomed to that. Uh, they're now saying not uh, July, August. They're saying now uh, this year. But the interesting thing is <clears throat> with phase zero, which is um, the implementation of uh, proof of stake, so the staking, and um, the minimum you need to have is 32 Ethereum to be a, become a validator of the network. And so somebody is analyzing how many wallets are there with at least 32 Ether in them. And that has been increasing over the last uh, 12 months. Uh, so people are getting also serious and becoming a validator. Next is uh, Gemini and Samsung uh, are starting a partnership uh, whereby Gemini will be uh, supporting 
the efforts in the North American market, so Canada and USA, um, if you're interested in buying uh, cryptos through uh, uh, through your Samsung telephone, uh, cell phone. Uh, Gemini is one of the serious and good uh, exchanges, so it's a trustworthy exchange. Uh, and that partnership will mean a lot because it will bring cryptos to the masses. At the same time, a, an interesting wallet has been developed, one that doesn't need any connectivity to the internet. Uh, so unlike the Trezor and Ledger, this one, Engrave, it doesn't, it's currently being developed, but it has got already the highest uh, certifications. Um, that it will be launched this year and, um, and it will be completely disconnected from the internet. So this is another le level of security that you can have on, on uh, wallets. The last subject is there has been also some movement in regards to the investors. So great scale investments, um, which is a huge uh, investment company. They are currently buying the equivalent of 150% of all uh, new Bitcoins that, that are being mined. That's equivalent of 3.2 billion US dollars that they purchased recently in uh, uh, Bitcoins. Um, that's a significant um, uh, investment, I, I would say. On the other hand, and, and then you've got uh, Paul Tudor, uh, one of the hedge fund uh, gurus in the US or even globally, um, that uh, is committing to Bitcoin too. On the other hand, you've got Goldman Sachs uh, shooting against Bitcoin. Although the arguments that they're bringing are not really valid. It's like somebody just being wanting to be negative and bringing arguments in that regard. So I'm, I'm, I'm positive if I look into the market. Anyway, that's from me today. Uh, I wish you a fantastic week. Looking forward to see you all next week again and back to the studio. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Thank you, Robert. Always so insightful. Now, just a reminder for those of you who are viewing uh, that we're not providing financial advice here on the show, but rather we're sharing what's happening in the cryptocurrency market and leaving it up to you. Always remember if you're going to trade, cryptocurrency markets are ever changing and they're always volatile. So you should only spend what you can afford to lose. Now back to Becca in the newsroom. Thank you, Robbie. Microsoft has finally released Windows 10 version 2004, also known as the Windows 10 May 2020 update, and promptly warned users not to install it. The update adds new security features and fixes for previous cumulative updates to Windows 10, but it also includes a plethora of bugs and issues. This time around, even Microsoft has warned users not to install the update as it's causing severe problems like the blue screen of death, or your system might also fail to restart after installing the update. After installing the update, Windows 10 devices may be unable to connect to more than one Bluetooth device. Another bug causes mouse input to stop functioning, and another makes it so variable refresh rate no longer works in most games, especially those using DirectX 9. Always on devices such as your network adapter might cause the computer to restart randomly and other issues may result in a blue screen of death. Needless to say, this is a bad situation for Microsoft and could be catastrophic for those who are stuck working from home right now without access to an IT department to fix a botched update. Microsoft has already started working on the problems and we expect a new update to the update by mid-June. In order to safeguard your PC, you should avoid installing this update. However, if you already installed it, you can uninstall it to enjoy a more stable version of Windows 10. If you're sick of the nonsense, head on over to linuxmint.com for a free permanent fix. Researchers in Australia claim they have recorded the fastest ever internet data speed. A team from Monash, Swinburne and RMIT universities logged a data speed of 44.2 terabits per second. At that speed, you could download more than 1,000 high-definition movies or all 13 seasons of Category 5 technology TV in under one second. And we'd upgrade our live stream to 16K just because we can. The average UK broadband speed is currently around 64 megabits per second. So this would be roughly 700,000 times faster than what most people in the UK experience day to day. 
Australia lies in the middle of global rankings for internet speeds and show connections are a regular source of complaints from users. Researchers said they achieved the new record speed by using a device that replaces around 80 lasers found in some existing telecom hardware with a single piece of equipment known as a microcomb. The microcomb was planted into and tested outside the laboratory using existing infrastructure similar to what to that used by Australia's national broadcast network. The result was the highest amount of data ever produced by a single optical chip which are used in modern fiber optic broadband systems around the world. The Australian team hope their findings offer a glimpse into how internet connections could look in the future. While the data speed for outstrips, uh, far outstrips any reasonable consumer need in today's world, Bill Kokorin, a lecturer in electrical and computer systems at Monash University, said it could ultimately help transform a wide variety of industries as modern life continues to put increasing pressure on bandwidth infrastructure. Mr. Kokorin says, what our research demonstrates is the ability for fibers that we already have in the ground to be the backbone of communications networks now and in the future. He goes on to say, it's not just Netflix we're talking about here. This data can be used for self-driving cars and future transportation, and it can help the medicine, education, finance, and e-commerce industries, as well as enable us to read with our grandchildren from kilometers away. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category5. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson.